I don't know how it was that really early on in my life as a photographer, I started asking myself the question, why am I doing this? And not only sort of in a big way, like why am I interested in photography, but taking a specific picture, why am I taking this photograph? And it was when my dad was giving me assignments. Hmm. So he would give me an assignment to go out at night and make a photograph of a building that makes it look monumental. So I would be out doing that and have a, a scene all set up. And there was one time when I asked myself that question, why am I doing this? And I realized the reason that I was doing it to is to impress my dad. I wanted my dad to tell me that I was a good photographer. And so what I was doing in that moment was applying a formula that I thought would impress him. And I realized I was doing that. And it sort of set me on a track of always asking myself, why am I taking this photograph? And I've caught myself a thousand times taking photographs because I want to take a photograph to show to somewhere, to somebody to, that will make them think I'm a good photographer. And that's a pitfall that if someone, if it never occurs to somebody to ask themselves that question, you could literally spend your entire career, if you're a hobbyist or an artist or whatever, just doing that. And you can look out there in the world and see those photographs, because it's really obvious. Like, that person is the only one who thinks they're getting away with it. And then there's a whole other genre of that which is people who are trying to impress everybody with how smart they are, like as a brilliant creative artist who defines paradigms or whatever thing. And they go and you can see how hard they're trying to do something that's arty, and it's transparently obvious. <laughs> and so those pitfalls can be avoided by a practice of self referencing self-examination and it's just kind of a relentless maybe sometimes brutally honest looking at like why am I doing this what am I going to do with this photograph and all of that stuff gets in the way of the actual process like the, the real magic of the medium it's like there's these closed doors and, and you have to get past the ego material for those doors to open. And my experience of it is once you can get past that and, and all it is is to form the intention instead of to make great art, to do something creative, to be impressive, to be original, like that's all ego material, like spinning in here. And I think the only thing that's required is to form the intention, instead of doing all that stuff, to just see, like pierce through that stuff, the, the veil of self and mind, to see something. And then, when we go out with that intention, then it's like in, in a, a child walking out on Easter morning, and you're on an Easter egg hunt. And there's all these magical stories and magical places, like, at all scales. Like these gardens of delight that are everywhere in the world that no one else is paying attention to and no one else sees and we can find them and then fall in love with them and then the, the, the whole rest of the act of photography, the art of photography is to just 
tell that little story or that big story, whatever that thing is that presented itself to us.